just thank you very much for the participants and uh, giving the opportunity uh, by organizing committee uh, organizing committee and uh, so to everyone is certainly because here so thank you Raju Kumar because what happened you discussed many sources but now I will discuss what is the planning and response operation so that's what actually see most of that environment you can find out impacted by man-made sources because if there is no source there will be not impacted here so normally we have to do for planning and development sector it is required actually there will be source definitely there will be impacted so how it can be minimized how we are going to planning that is very important so before going to any project and we have to do planning so that uh, that will be economical and should be mitigated and response operation also has to be taken care of here you see now there are so many you can see in say, offshore projects development you can find out this water, water quality and uh, water quality means again there is a desalination plant and in uh, you know, outfall discharges and uh, treating effluents in discharge into the water these are all the impacts now here i am taking only one small thing that is called oil spill here we have developed many other softwares for past three and two decades so how we got background means when i was studying an iit karakpur i am taken phd i had so much interested to go for this mathematical modeling only but at that time we have a small computer resources that time you can find out you may not be bound with thing that is a pc80 it is booting with the floppy so even though i started with the navier stokes equation i think you would have read but that's very complex equations that we have actually streamlined means linear linear way easy to solve because of we don't have that much computer abilities but iit karpur when it comes to 93 we have cyber computer 840 that is the fastest in india so that time i utilized actually we have done a lot of consultancy during my phd period in iit sir only i built up that career and the same career i continued without any deviation so that's the reason I had developed my own softwares and used for our Indian waters and more than 300 to 400 projects we carried out including ONGC and NIO, NIOT, ICMAM, East Coast, West Coast, almost oil exploratory drilling activities of ONGC we carried out. Now in this aspect I will just show some scenarios also. Here you can find out if you start any port development because sea transport is very important. While sea transport, you can utilize for many other things, either maybe crude oil transport or maybe uh, cargo operations. But in case of if there is an accident happen the sea road, there could be leakages due to uh, failure in of engines or accidents, FOIL or crude oil tankers. Then if it is spilled on the water, then how it is actually spreading, how it is actually convecting, how it is actually deposition, this are all the process is very, very important. So, that's what actually I will discuss with you here. That's a leakage of SPM. This is general here. So go to the next slide. See here, in this model, what happened periphery background, I will tell you. So one has to be think of what is the behind of the modeling here. Say so what are the sources means, what is the sink and source, and how it's convecting, and how it's spreading, how it's a diffusion and dispersion. These are the process actually. So that is called the first, what are the driving process if they spilled on the oil here? That is called the hydrodynamic. If you go to sea or maybe estuaries, there will be tidal impact, the water will go flooding, ebbing. The currents will be there, that is the main driving process. That it has to be predicted very properly. Apart from that, what are the other, other actually impact on the surface when they're moving here? That's a wind speed also there. So in hydrodynamic model also you can see how that water moves one to one location and how it is go for deep as if you go to ocean there will be deep water currents also we have to predict it here so that's what we have to predict properly the driving forces of the water that's called a hydrodynamic model then the salinity and temperature that also because this also impact on the flow regime it also changes the current that has to be properly modeled and the spill trajectory and weathering model spill will be when the oil will be in the surface there are other things actually it will be evaporated hydrocarbons you know it won't be remain it will be mixed with the water something will be evaporating it will be dissolved this all the process will be weathering model and the search and rescue if in case if something is actually just fallen there how it goes based on the hydrodynamic forces we can predict it here that such is risk also integrated here and wind calculation see wind is also here it's a main primary forces for the oil movement 
So there is an online movement of that means every six, three days we can predict the wind, what is going to happen. That also is integrated here. And the predicts of spill combating equipment. See so what are the equipments required based on the dispersion of the spill. We can find out whether how many skimmers are required and what is the boom length is required. These are all the equipments also we can predict through model. Spill operation plan, we can plan it actually, how we can operate, how we can mitigate the tile spills. This can be done. And the dispersion also, we can find out how much dispersion is required for combating the oil spill. So in such a burn calculator and mechanical equipment, these are all things are integrated in the software to predict for response operation. Next slide, please. See, I will go very basic things. I don't want to go more actually detailed. When you go for hydrodynamic model, how we are going to solve? These are the simplified Navier-Stokes equation, three-dimensional. Because now we are confined to three directions, x direction, y direction, z direction. Z direction is the depth wise, x and y is the literal direction. So that's what actually we are saying u, v, w. So when you predict it here, uh, u velocity, v velocity, w velocity. So based on this thing, we can also see how the oil moves, which the direction it moves. That's what actually this is the hydrodynamic model. Next one. Yeah. Hmm. Next. next. See, these are the oil spill transport models. See, oil spill, this is the generalized actually equation for any type of water quality model systems. But here, that SP is the no, source and sink. That varies depending upon the water quality. If you go for actually water quality, there are chemical reactions, all things will come, source and sink will be included here. So this equation also we solve using the Lagrangian particle discrete method. Next one. See, this software actually used for many geographical locations of the India. So including ONGC, Bombay, uh, East Coast, Kain, Mumbai Port Trust, HPCL, BPCL, and many other companies who are there actually East Coast of India. That's what we have done here. Next one. See, you can find out, we can broadly categorize the sources, uh, means from here, offshore exploration, flow pipeline, flow, because uh, last time, uh, Mr. Rajiv Kumar also explained about the so resources and uh, offshore development exploration. Here, this will come here. Flow line rupture, leakage at well head, host failure supply, and uh, this oil well blowout scenarios, leakage at manifold, leakage up at FSPO. And if you go to ports and harbors, cargo operations, loading and loading operations, and ship <coughs> collision, grounding, channels, bunkering, fueling, pipeline ruptures, accidental spills. So in this also, they have so many kilometers of pipelines. So there also leakage also we carried out for them. And uh, subsea shore and pipelines, SPM also. These are all the important sources here. And uh, this is also one more important. If the leakage happens on the surface, that will be different. If it is leakage happens on the subsea, that will be different. Because when it comes to uh, deep sea, it has to come some water depth. There will be uh, bi 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 sea forces will be there. When it comes to surface, the spreading will be more and some of the oil also will be dissoluted in the water. These are all things have to be properly modeled. Next one. See here, some of the cases we'll show here. This hydrocarbons explosion studies we have done East Coast. You see, there are so many wells will be there and uh, the KG D6 basin here. And uh, this is the domain we selected for a competi competition purpose. Next one. See here, the right side you can find out. This is the finite elemental mesh actually, because for accuracy purpose, we need actually more computer systems, uh, CPU time. But right now, you know, that is not much problem here. Now we are actually very high-end computers we have. That is the reason we made for more accuracy, finite elemental methods actually, to create the mesh also near the coastal side, which is very fine, because to match the exactly the coastline features, and uh, there is a, uh, uh, there is a, some structures will be there, like a port structures, all things we can take up here. And uh, that's what actually five meters mesh also can create a shoreline. When you go to offshore, it will be five kilometers also we can take up. So this is the way scenario, APM mesh we created. And the right side you can find out, that is the bathymetry. Because we need to have the actually depth of the, depth is required for a modeling purpose. So how the currents will be behaving, predicting here. That's what we are selecting here. And the sea level variation also we can, using the software, how the levels of water can change with respect to timing. You can see, uh, this is a, uh, because of moon and sun, 
there is a tidal variation, low water, high water, spring, deep conditions, that is also predicted here. And the right side, that is the variation of currents here. You can see, the, I observed here, most of that east coast, the currents are very low compared to west coast. Next one. This is the, you see, modeling of high crucial trajectory, fate and weather characteristics. See, model boundary conditions, we are giving the sea level variation at that model boundary, open boundary. And this model also has to be calibrated very well with respect to observed tide in current. So most of the models actually, if you're not calibrating, we don't know how the accuracy we are getting. That's part. First of all, some, of, some other locations we have to select it, where we are going to get the sea level changes and currents. At that time, the model predictor we have to compare with the physical observations. When it's coming properly, after doing the parameters, the model is actually behaving well for that actual domain. That's what we have to do. So we, after calibrating only, we are going for further, further analysis. That means, first of all, the hydrodynamic modeling is fine-tuning properly. So then we can go for high spill prediction. Next, please. See, here, we carried that east coast. The depth is more than 2,000 meters we selected. That is the reason we selected three-dimensional model. Because if you go to shallow water, 100 meters or 60 meters, the two-dimensional model is enough. If you go for deep sea, we need to have the three-dimensional model to predict exactly. Because most of the oil spill explosion studies, the deep water, if there is a spill happens there, that, that we have to predict it properly. That's what actually we have gone for three-dimensional here. The layer one, layer two, layer three means different layers we selected for presentation purpose only. How the currents will be varying from depth-wise, that's what we are showing here. Next, please. So here, some people see every uh, monthly or daily, the weather changes will be there. That is also important. That is also, we should take an account, actually. So, some people will say, yes, no, 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 I will take monthly once. It is not like this. Fortnight competitions are very important because the crude oil or anything itself, only if, this, if there is an accident happen, the night evaporation will be different, day evaporation is different. That's what one has to be taken care of, temperature variation, that's very, very important. So that's what every monthly fortnight competition we have done for a prediction of the tile spill modeling study, uh, prediction of uh, dispersion of oil spills. Next one. See here, see some of the cases I want to show here. At location one, if the spill happens there, if there's a blowout scenario that happens here, it took almost 11 days. See, you can find out the blue colors to red color. That much of time is taken to lose the coast. So in such cases actually, then how much area coast is affected and what are the important uh, marine facilities are there, we have to plan it. How much impact is there? Before exit to the coast, one has to plan properly. If you're going on for left for land days, the area is going to be impacted more. So in such cases actually, one has to plan, that is a very important, planning, what are the resources, where are you going to mobilize, where is going to release the oil. These are all things actually it has to be taken care of. So th that's what actually planning for equipments are very important. That's what how much uh, uh, time is taking to reach the coast before that one, one has to prepare. So this is the planning and prediction. That's what important here. And here, uh, second location is, is taken different, different because location to location is different. Because the way it is happening, the currents are changing from place to place. So that is the reason one has to see which is the nearest to the coast that has to be taken is the worst scenario for planning purpose. Next one. So this right side, you can see the weathering. The time to time, you can plan it here. If you can leave for one hour spread, how much actually evaporation? How much oil on the surface? One has to plan how much oil on the surface, then what are the equipments required? So that's what we have to see that graphs with the time taking. That's very important to, for uh, competing the resources. Next one. See, there is one more thing. After just doing the marine sensitive areas, marine sensitive areas here, see the human settlement and uh, that ecological and biological and industrial, we have to identify the locations actually. All things it has to be mapped. That's called a sensitive mapping, sensitivity areas. So in case of the spill reaches to so and so area, we should know actually what are the sensitive, how, is, how much is damage, damage going on. So when uh, priority we have to give, the priority is actually important. If there is a uh, lose, that means there is a damage more actually, economically damage more or industrially damage more, immediately we have to give priority. That's what zone wise we are making. Next one. We are giving here. So this is very important. Sensitivity mapping has to be extreme. 
that is very important, high, moderate, low, based on that actually, that socio-economic and uh, uh, biologically, we are actually mapping, that's called a sensitive mapping, and here also the spreading landing, which in month, in month actually, most of where is landing up. In case of, suppose, January, there is a case, where it's landing, March, different times actually, we have to map it accordingly, we have to plan it. I am told that next session is here in the same session, same, okay. same okay. one. So, so any time you can conclude it. Right. Okay, next one. So this is, <coughs> this next slide. And NAVA studies here, based on actually, now we have to find out, there are actually equipments are available, mechanical equipments and chemical, and these are all different type of equipments are okay for response operation. One has to plan which equipment is better. Suppose if you go to coastal area, there are so many biological resources there, mangroves, everything. So their dispersant may not be suggestible. So in offshore, where there is a possibility of dispersant can be used here, and near the shore can be mechanical equipment, skimmers, booms, and everything can be utilized for controlling that. That's what actually we have to see, which is the more beneficial, that one we have to select it, based on the criteria. This is not common, it's a place to place, it will vary. Next one. And similarly, like this, some other entire that East Coast, we had done the modeling purpose. Similarly, what I explained to you, I would like to see, because of time permit here, I will skip up this one. Next one. See, other one, this is the Gulf of Kutch. See, sometimes Gulf of Kutch and Gulf of Kambath currents are very, very rapidly. It goes around 2 to 3.5 meters per second. Such a speed is there, Kambath also. In such cases, if there is a spill happens there, there is a lot of actually spreads will be there. So one, one has to be very, very careful. This area also we have done, many studies we have carried out this area. Because West Coast also, in Bombay High also we have done for ages also, pipeline leakages, and many cases also we were there. But I could not able to show right now because of time frame. Yes. So next one. Last, go skip. This is the Bombay High. Next. Last. Next slide. This is Dhamra Port. Next. This is the... Next one. See, these are all the scenarios actually we carried out. Spring, spring flood and ebbing side, how the difference will be there. If the spring happens, if, the, if the spill happens during the flood will be different, and uh, during the ebb, if there is spill happens, that scenario also will be different. That's what one has to take care of. The tidal phases also, that's very important. Next one. Next. Next one. Next. So these are, I think, very, you know, Tane Creek, Jawaharlal Nehru Port, actually. And uh, recently, this ongoing project right now, MBPT. And here, the, this is the important, actually, for the India, the seaport. A lot of, actually, the transport is going on cargo operations here. So that's, un see, now, in case of a bridge spill happens here, there are so many important locations that are going to be impacted here. That's what we have predicted here. This project also we completed. Just next one. See, this is the bathymetry area for the Tane Creek. Next. And uh, see, this is the parental mesh. And the, I, once I told you, the model has to be calibrated accurately based on the observed current and tidal. So this is supplied by the J MBPT. We have done this work. Next one. And uh, these are the actually, see, that simulated tide during the ebbing period, how it's variation of the water. And the current also is the speed also. It's 1.2 meters. That's what, in case of if there is a spill happens during ebbing tide, it comes to ocean side. If it goes to flooding side, it goes to Thane upstream. That all the, there is a marine sensitive area will be there. It will be affected here. Next one. This again, this is a flooding scenario. That is the water level changes. See, sea mouth actually, if there is a 1.4 meters height is there. And you see upstream side, that will be like a 0.9 meter. So this is because of tidal variations. Next one. And you see, if the spill happens there near the jetty, near that uh, JNPT, so how that it will going to affect it here, areas. That we are showing after just, you know, 10 days or 15 days is going to affect it. Even day-wise also it shows here how that uh, uh, spreading will be there and where it's actually touching that one, impacted the coast, everything we have shown here. Next one. So this is actually a variation of actually oil on the surface because timely it changes and uh, dissolution, emulsion, how much reaching the coast, and uh, when are we going to take the commitment operations, all things we planned here. Next one. So this is the one, finally, we are given the technical justification, how many days is it taking to reach the coast, 
and how much oil in the surface, how much it is in the coast, and where is actually hitting that coast, that light length position also we are giving, so that they can, seeing that thing is surveyed, they can plan it actually properly with what type of equipments and how we are going to mobilize, for which location they are going to mobilize, these are all things one can plan it actually. These are the sensitive areas. See, that's why this map is very important here. So regarding this vulnerability, biological resources, industry, all things we have to plan properly before actually starting the work. So then we came to know if the spill actually reaches to some sort of coast, then how, what are the things is impacted and what are the priority base? Sensitive mapping it has to be done. Next one. See, this is the one. Extreme the high moderate. Now you this was actually, we are planning accordingly. Okay, sir, I'll close this, this one. Right. This is the one, sir. Yeah. So, so this is the one.